What's up guys, it's Matt Collins Jones here, also known as the D365 Geek, and today we're talking about Power Automate and the Excel Online Business Connector, and we're going to look at the action which is add a key column to a table. So that that sort of language confused me a little bit when I started looking at this action, so I did a bit of research, and what it means by key column is just a column in the table. The reason it says T is you can use it to then search and then find the right row in the table, but it's just a column in the table that you're adding to it. So because the connector doesn't have any sort of way of like formatting things or enforcing things, all this is really doing is saying, okay, let's take whatever um, data we're putting in there and we just add a column onto the table. So let's take a look at it. So in Power Automate, I have a manual trigger here because we don't need anything from a trigger action. I'm going to click on new step, choose Excel online business, and then scroll down until we get to add a key column to a table. At this point, we need a few pieces of information. We need the location of the file. So in my instance, I'm going to put it in OneDrive for business, but you could also have this in the SharePoint, and that's what the rest of these groups are. These are all the SharePoint sites I've got in my environment. So I choose OneDrive for business, the sender asked me for a document library. It's going to give me two for OneDrive for some reason. I'm just going to choose the top one. Next, it's going to ask me for the file. So if I choose the file picker here, I can navigate through my OneDrive for business and find the right file. So I've put it in a folder called Power Automate. And then we have a folder, here, a book here called Flowbook. The next thing it's going to ask me for is the table inside that workbook. So in my instance, I only have a single table in that workbook. So I can choose table one here, and then we can do this. Uh, then we can it, we can add it to that table. The last thing is T column, which surprisingly is the only not required piece of content in this whole action. However, this action is specifically designed to make a new column, uh, which is a which is a slight confusing thing. So in this instance, I'm going to put it's so a default uh, defaults it with Power Apps ID. I'm going to put a value in here of location. So maybe we want to know the location of where this data is. We'll click on test. I'll perform the trigger action, save and test. And before we hit run flow, I'm going to show you my workbook. This is my current workbook. It's called Flowbook. We can see we've got names, age, occupation, and AKA. This is my DC superheroes table here. And what we're going to do is we're going to add a, a column in column E here called location. So if I go back to my flow and click run flow, click done. Flow's going to say it ran successfully and we've added that onto it. If I go back to my flow book, we can now see there is a new column there, so location. So it doesn't populate it with any information, but it does add that table on, add that column on there. And then we can use other actions to then populate those tables with that information. Now, when I was trying to think of what this could be used for, I kind of thought of dynamic schemas. So when you have a, a issue where you may or may not know how many things you are getting in, what you could do is you could use this to make a dynamic schema for your data. So say you are going to create a, maybe say something like a Microsoft form, Forms are going to have like three, um, three or four questions. Then we're going to use the responses to those questions to then create columns on this. Um, but it may be that the next Microsoft form that you create, you actually need four columns or five columns. Or maybe you're getting data from, from another location, and again, it may or may not conform to the same, the same schema or the same name, and you need to add columns. So you can actually use this to dynamically build out the number of columns that you need and then you can use other actions to then populate those rows with data with that new schema that you've got. So this is a really cool and really handy action in that regard. But as always, what do you guys think? What do you use it for? Do you, do you use it or do you not use it? Let me know in the comments down below. If you enjoyed this video, if you could like it and share it with your friends, that would be appreciated. If you've not already, click that subscribe button and stay up to date with all my latest videos. And I'll see you next time.